Hello, how's it going? My name is Kevin Luna and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. This video is going to give you a brief or in-depth explanation on how these superfoods can really impact your life and why you are someone that really needs this in your life. And if you don't feel like this resonates with you, that's okay, because this is definitely something that someone in your life definitely needs. So I'm first going to walk you through a few different videos. The first video is going to be about Monsanto, one of the most damaging companies in the world. They've recently changed their name over to Bayer. We're going to talk about a brief history of Monsanto and how the chemical farming industry has impacted our food system as a whole. And this impacts everyone, no matter what diet you live in. If you have some, if you eat something that originally came from the soil, right, then this is impacting you. We're also going to be talking about the solution to glyphosate, as well as the power of some of these superfoods and where they come from. So sit back, enjoy, and let's take, you can get some tea, you can get some sage, whatever you want to do, get comfortable. We're going to watch a few videos here and I'm going to walk you through them uh, right now. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to uh, show you uh, some of the power of these foods that we're talking about. So the first one that we have is the video from Monsanto, about Monsanto. So let's look at this one. Genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, have been the subject of controversy pretty much since their inception. More recently, they've become sort of a buzzword for outraged social media experts, but don't let these Twitter crusaders fool you. GMOs are in fact a very serious topic. They have an impact on everyone. Take the US, for example, where the most produced crop by far is corn. In 2014, over 361 million tons of corn were cultivated, more than all other crops combined. That corn is then used to make a variety of different products. Not just food, you'll find corn derivatives in coke, milk, toothpastes, aspirin and varnish. Corn is also the most popular animal feed, and when you consider the fact that 85% of all US corn is genetically modified, you'll realize that GMOs are actually all around you. That's why this week on Behind the Business we'll be taking a look at the company that started it all, the world's largest seed company, Monsanto. Monsanto was originally founded as a chemical company in 1901 by John Francis Queenie. Queenie was in his 40s by that point and he had had a pretty rough start to his life. The Great Chicago Fire of 1871 left his family homeless when he was only 12. He had to quit his education in order to start working full-time as an office boy at a wholesale drug firm. Through hard work and dedication, John climbed the ranks of the pharmaceutical industry and he eventually moved to St. Louis in 1891 as a representative of the Mayer Brothers Drug Company, the largest drug distributor at the time. Five years later, John married Olga Monsanto and when he decided to establish a business of his own in 1901, he named his company after her. John established Monsanto in order to produce saccharin, an artificial sweetener that is 300 times sweeter than table sugar and has effectively no nutritional value. Saccharin was first synthesized in 1879 and although it is a wildly popular sugar substitute today, back in the 1900s nobody in the US had even heard of it. Germany had a near monopoly on its production and there wasn't a single manufacturer in the United States. John's newly established business was the first US saccharin producer, and the American market turned out to be very lucrative. One of his earliest customers was actually the Coca-Cola company, which still uses saccharin in its popular Diet Cokes. By 1905, John had added two more food additives to Monsanto's repertoire, vanillin and coumarin, which up until then were also produced only by Germany. In its first decade, Monsanto barely turned a profit because the Germans were constantly undercutting them. When the United States declared war on Germany in 1917 though, all chemical imports were halted, leaving a huge void in the market that Monsanto was more than happy to fill. Its revenue jumped from $81,000 in 1913 to $905,000 in 1919, establishing Monsanto as one of the big US chemical companies. 1919 also marked Monsanto's first steps abroad when it acquired a Welsh chemical producer that made aspirin and rubber catalyzers. This was Monsanto's first big acquisition, but it would definitely not be the last. The 1920s saw Monsanto expand its product range to feature industrial chemicals, the most notable one being polychlorinated biphenyl, or PCB. Now PCBs can come in various molecular configurations, 209 to be precise, and all of them are very toxic. Their proven carcinogens and pollutants that are resistant to acids and heat and need about 200 days of direct sunlight just to start breaking down. 
If you're thinking this was some exotic, rarely used chemical, you'd be wrong. PCBs were used as coolants and various electrical devices prior to the 1970s, most notably in power transformers and capacitors. Odds are, if you go to some of the more neglected cities in your state, you'd find transformers with PCB warning labels there. Monsanto was the only US producer of PCBs for almost 50 years before Congress finally banned the substance in 1979. Internal documents leaked in 2002 show that Monsanto was well aware of the toxicity of PCBs more than a decade before their eventual ban. In fact, Monsanto's first move at circumventing environmental laws happened all the way back in 1926 when the company incorporated a town in Illinois called, you guessed it, Monsanto. Back then, local jurisdictions were responsible for most environmental laws, and Monsanto the town was very lenient with its regulations, so much so that Monsanto the company built its largest PCB factory there. That town still exists by the way, but it's called Sogat now, and it has barely 159 residents. The case with PCBs is one of the earliest examples of Monsanto's extreme for-profit culture that has by now become nothing short of an immortal internet meme. The sad thing is that Monsanto's awful reputation is actually pretty well deserved, but you'll see more about that a little bit later. So, by the time the Second World War had started in 1939, Monsanto had established itself as the US military's premier chemical supplier. Their most valuable product at the time was styrene, a compound crucial for the production of synthetic rubber. Interestingly enough, Monsanto was also a large contributor to the Manhattan Project. They were instrumental in the development of the polonium-based initiators used in the two atomic bombs dropped on Japan. During the post-war decades, Monsanto got into the agriculture business by developing pesticides. Their first one, called dichlorodiphenyltrichloroethane, or DDT, went into production in 1944 and was banned less than 30 years later due to its extreme toxicity. Another herbicide produced by Monsanto was Agent Orange, which became infamous after the US military used it as a defoliant during Operation Ranch Hand of the Vietnam War. Agent Orange was very effective at destroying the crops of the Viet Cong, but it was so toxic that it also ended up contaminating more than 3 million people and causing half a million Vietnamese children to be born with deformities. The early 1970s saw Monsanto make huge progress in the development of LED lights. In fact, Monsanto was the first company to mass-produce them, which brought the price of LEDs down from $200 to less than 10 cents apiece. Just a few years later, though, the US government finally cracked down on Monsanto's reckless use of harmful chemicals. The bans on PCBs and several pesticides hurt Monsanto's revenue greatly, and on top of that, several class-action lawsuits were initiated that ended up costing hundreds of millions of dollars. In this period of distress, Monsanto's executives decided to shift the company's focus away from chemical production and towards agricultural biotechnology. This transition occurred during the early 1980s, and back then biotechnology was a very young science. Monsanto was early to the party, which gave the company's immense R&D division a head start. In 1983, Monsanto's scientists, led by Robert Fraley, became the first in history to genetically modify plants. This pivotal achievement ushered in a new era for agriculture, the era of GMOs. Now, despite what the armchair experts from Twitter might be telling you, genetically modified crops are not bad in and of themselves. The reason there is such a negative perception of GMOs is that, as has happened numerous times in history, people take a good thing and out of greed they take it so far that it eventually becomes a bad thing. GMO crops are a perfect example of this. There are a number of ways to genetically modify a crop without compromising the health of the people who eat it. Some of the most basic ones are shortening the plant's seed to seed period or outright pumping up the size of the resulting fruit or vegetable. Monsanto, however, in their quest for ever increasing yield, took GMO crops to a whole new level. Back in the early 1980s, when Monsanto was faced with a slew of lawsuits and a ban on its best products, they discovered glyphosate, an extremely potent herbicide that saved the company from potential bankruptcy. Monsanto marketed their herbicide under the name Roundup, and in the span of just two decades it became the most widely used herbicide in the United States. The reason for its success lies in Monsanto's development of GMO crops. You see, in the past, farmers had to plant their seeds a good deal away from each other. They needed that space in order to till their fields, otherwise weeds would grow around their crops and kill them. 
When Monsanto developed GMO crops that were resistant to Roundup, however, a whole new avenue of cultivation emerged. Suddenly, farmers could plant their crops much closer together, since they could just dump tons of Roundup directly onto their crops without harming them. As you can imagine, this was a huge increase in crop yield, and combined with the cost reduction of not having to till the land as much, farmers quickly switched to Monsanto's GMO solution. Up until the year 2000, Monsanto was the sole producer of glyphosate due to the patents they held, and it is during this time that the company expanded into the titan that it is today. Roundup was, of course, just the beginning, and since then Monsanto has spent tens of billions into the development of various pesticides and seeds. Last year alone they spent one and a half billion dollars on R&D, and these investments have more than paid off. Two years ago, Monsanto's GMO seeds accounted for 80% of the USA's total corn acreage, and today that number is even higher. One reason for Monsanto's immense success in the seed business is their creative use of patents on their seeds. Farmers who plant Monsanto's GMO seeds are subject to strict rules about what they can actually do with them. They are not allowed, for example, to replant these seeds, nor to sell or share them with anyone else, thus ensuring that Monsanto's revenue remains stable and growing. The language of these rules is so convoluted that farmers could potentially be found liable even in cases when the wind randomly blows Monsanto's seeds from a neighbor's farm. To complete its transformation into an agricultural behemoth, in 1997 Monsanto spun off the entirety of its chemical business into a separate company called Solutia. This was Monsanto's attempt at a fresh start, and on their website they even claimed to be a relatively new company that just happens to share the same name with its polluting predecessor. Of course, this was all for show, as the new Monsanto's executives were the same people that had led the old company for decades. What they did with Solutia was to essentially try to wash their hands off Monsanto's morally questionable past. Solution inherited not only the struggling chemical business, but also the majority of litigation relating to Monsanto's PCBs and other industrial pollutants. It probably won't come as a surprise that just six years later, Solutia filed for bankruptcy, only to be eventually swallowed up by the Eastman Chemical Company. The new Monsanto, of course, has been incapable of shaking off its bad reputation, but that hasn't stopped its global expansion. Today it's bigger than ever, with 15 billion dollars of revenue just from last year alone. About half of that money, by the way, came from the sales of the Roundup pesticide and the GMO seeds resistant to it. It's sad how despite all the boycotting and controversies, Monsanto's products are so ingrained in modern agriculture that there's just no getting rid of them. By all accounts, Monsanto is here to stay, but it's actually very possible that they'll soon stop being an independent company. Germany's pharmaceutical titan Bayer, on which we've also done a video by the way, had been trying to acquire Monsanto for the past four months. Just a few days ago, Monsanto accepted a 66 billion dollar all cash offer, which still needs regulatory approval, sure, but consider this. In the past 14 months, we've seen the mergers of six of the biggest companies in the industry, and so far analysts are giving the Bayer Monsanto merger a 50% chance of going through. Even if the merger fails though, it's very hard to be optimistic about a Monsanto free future. From an investment point of view, it would make sense to buy shares of the company that controls the world's food supply, but sometimes it's better to forego revenue in order to actually make the world a better place. All right, so that was a little bit about Monsanto and their questionable history. Just so you know, Bayer did buy them out. That did actually happen. And so now we're going to talk about the solution um, when it comes to Monsanto and what we can do um, to protect ourselves. Because like they said in the video, it is not going anywhere. And so it is up to us to make sure that we find the solutions. And we have an incredible solution right here called Biomedic. So have a look at this video. It is incredible. Back in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, tobacco companies said, smoking is good for you. No problem. Trust us. Then in the 60s, they changed their tune and said, well, smoking may not be so good, but it certainly isn't bad. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? Fast forward to today, and of course we know that smoking cigarettes is bad. In fact, potentially deadly. And many experts fear that a similar health crisis is happening right now with our food supply. Processed food is now loaded with so many chemicals and artificial ingredients that it is barely recognizable by our body as food. And the biggest health danger of all 
isn't listed on any label. It's called glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup. It's in the food we eat, the water we drink, and the ground we walk on. You cannot wash it off, and you cannot cook it out. And buying organic is not always enough. We are being inundated by constant and unavoidable exposure to this toxin. In 2015, the World Health Organization said glyphosate was a probable carcinogen. Then in 2017, the state of California verified glyphosate causes cancer. A cancer-causing herbicide that has been found in 93% of the U.S. population as of 2015, and today may have grown to include 100% of us. The danger is real. And there is something you can do to get glyphosate out of your body. Introducing a new breakthrough product that is proven to eliminate up to 74% of the glyphosate in your body in just six weeks. It's a product exclusive to Purium. Introducing Biomedic. It is the first and only product to receive the gold seal of approval from the Detox Project as a third-party validated glyphosate solution. Biomedic not only gets rid of glyphosate, it also rebuilds and restores a healthy microbiome for better nutrient absorption, sustainable weight loss, and improved mental clarity. Even with all the documented dangers, the use of glyphosate is exploding. Purium has the solution. And everyone needs what we have. We have the ability to respond to this serious global issue, and therefore, a responsibility to share this important message. It's like having the antidote to cigarette smoking in the 60s. The difference is, you don't have to smoke, but you do have to eat. This is an opportunity for you to experience optimal health and help your friends and family take their health back. Be a part of the solution to the pollution. So this one was incredible. So this is the glyphosate solution, the only one in the world. And it got even better since this video was recorded. It's now plastic free, 100% compostable packaging. And it is one of the key things that truly helped me in my journey um, to be able to help heal my body, heal my gut and improve my autoimmune disease. So I have no more symptoms and that is incredible. So the next one that we're going to watch is absolutely powerful and it's all about the power shake. And so we're going to go right into that one next. All right. And like I said before, since this video came out, this is plastic free. Yes. Compostable packaging. This one is absolutely amazing. This one tastes so delicious. This improves your power, your strength, your performance, your endurance. And I just absolutely love this. So here we go. And let's take a look at this power shake. Okay. Let's talk about the power shake. The power shake is where it all started. It is the key to our 10 day transformation. It is the core of our core three. It is in fact, five products in one. It is a green food product with spirulina and wheatgrass, super amazing, alkalizing, antioxidant rich, green food. Then we have our super slow burning carbohydrate combination of quinoa, amaranth, spelt, chia. This is a gluten-free, super slow burning, beta glucan rich carbohydrate source, the best kind. That's complemented by the amazing fat that comes from rice bran solubles, the fat that burns fat. This is the adiponectin activator. Adiponectin is a hormone that causes your body to use fat as a source of energy. So we have amazing proteins, loads of antioxidants, super slow burning carbohydrates, a fat that burns fat, and add to that the beautiful sweet taste of carrot juice, rich in carotenoids. These five superfoods come together, of course, and when they're together, they are powerful. And that's why we call it the power shake. Just put it in your shaker, shake it up, and power your body. All right, that one was absolutely incredible. And you got a chance to hear from the founder of the company, Perium, Dave Sandoval himself. He's still working to this day over three 
decades, he's been focused and dedicated his life to making sure that we are getting the highest quality, best food possible from organic farms. And the Power Shake is plastic free and it tastes delicious. It's sweetened with a Lohan berry. Um, so you have original flavor, which is the one that he described. And we have the one that is sweetened with a Lohan berry, which is one of the best fruits um, available. So the next thing that we're going to be sharing is part of the core four as well, which is most people start with. And it is the super aminos. And these are the building blocks of protein. These are the highest quality vegan protein you could buy. Let's have a look at this video next. If you're serious about protein, then I want to introduce you to the most incredible vegan protein on the face of the earth. Scientific studies show that eating vegan protein actually is more effective at building muscle, lean, strong muscle without injuries than any form of meat. No protein has more scientific studies proving how absolutely incredible it is. Over 30 double blind clinical studies prove that Super Amino 23 does things that no other protein does. You know that ripped feeling you get when you're working out? Well, that's because your skin is wrapped tightly around your muscles. That's called elasticity. Super Aminos improves elasticity. It's pre-digested. 99% of it goes directly to your muscles. All other proteins, no more than 50%. That means it has to go through your livers and kidneys, slow you down, clog up your blood. Super Amino 23 goes directly to your muscle in 20 three minutes. Super Amino 23, soy free, gluten free, non GMO and 100% pure vegan protein. I absolutely love that. Um, that's so amazing. And yeah, these are incredible. The building blocks of protein, all protein originates in amino acids. And the very next one that we have is, oh my gosh, this one is incredible. The apothecary anti-aging tart cherry concentrate with the power of 7,000 ORAC units per serving, which is the highest in the world. This is the highest antioxidants of any fruit in the world. So let's hear Dave share about the apothecary. Let's talk about apothecary, the single most potent fruit on the face of the earth. Did you know among all of the fruits on earth that none of them has more scientific research supporting its ability to support you? And tart cherries are not some ancient secret that was used by cultures in the past. It's a fairly modern discovery. It came about through epidemiological studies where they tested people who grew certain foods and they found that people who grew blueberries and people who grew cherries had certain amazing youthful qualities that were not typical of people their age. Many people who work with their hands, who work hard, suffer from uric acid buildup. And we all know what that could lead to. Nothing is more effective at counteracting uric acid then these amazing cherries. Tart cherry has a naturally occurring melatonin. And melatonin is a vital hormone, a vital antioxidant that helps regulate our different patterns in our body that lead to deep sleep. And when we are able to naturally introduce melatonin to our body, we get that vital deep sleep and only these special cherries, these unique cherries, naturally contain melatonin. So come experience the delicious taste, come experience that deep restful sleep, that freedom in your joints and ligaments, and of course, that feeling of knowing that your body's being cleaned of free radicals every single day, every single night, because of this incredible discovery, this modern discovery, the most potent fruit on the face of the earth.
I absolutely love the apothecary. It is so delicious. And I've never had such deep restful sleep regenerated. I wake up ready to go, super excited. The last thing that I wanna share with you is our website. So let's have a look at this website real quick. We have our superfoods website. I can share this with you um, as you need it. And you have so much information on here about us. Um, the Wellness Warrior Earth Guardians, what we're here to do to protect the earth. We're partnered with Perium, an organic non-GMO superfood company. All of the information is right here, vegan, organic, um, the Perium purity commitment, no artificial colors, no artificial flavors, sweeteners, synthetic vitamins, binders, fillers, GMOs, pesticides, no irritated um, ingredients, certified organic whenever possible, which is nearly all of it. Um, farm fresh, superfood based, plant powered, processed close to the source, gently dehydrated, super concentrated based on ancient wisdom backed by modern science and high nutrient to calorie ratio. So this video has gone on quite long enough, and I really appreciate you if you're sticking around to the end. And also, if this resonates you, please get back. Let's get on a call. Let's connect, and let's get you started on your superfood pathway. And I can't wait to hear back from you. Have a great day.